Good evening, brilliant humans. My name is Savannah Peterson and very delighted to be streaming to you live from the Cube Studios here in Motor City, Michigan. I've got John Furrier on my left. John, this is our last interview of the day. Energy just seems yeah. to keep oozing. Yeah. How you doing? Day two, three days of coverage of the Cube. Love the segments. This one's great because we have a practitioner who's implementing I love all the this hardcore talks. It's going to be awesome. Can't wait to get into it. Yeah, I'm very excited for this one. If it's not very clear, we are a community focused. Community is a huge theme here at the show, at KubeCon. And our next guests are actually a provider and a customer. Turning it over to you, Lisa and Jake, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thanks for it's having us. Great to be here. It is our pleasure. Lisa, you're with Cockroach. Just in case the audience isn't familiar, give us a quick little sound bite. We're a distributed SQL database, highly scalable, reliable, the database you can't kill, right? We will survive the apocalypse. Um, so very resilient. Um, our customers, mostly retail, fintech, um, gaming, online gambling, they, uh, they, they need that resiliency, they need that scalability. So the indestructible database is the elevator pitch. And the success has been very well documented. Valuation obviously is a scorecard, but huge customers. We were at the Escape 19, just for the record, the first ever multi-cloud conference. Hasn't come back, maybe it'll, Love it. it'll come back soon? Yeah, well we did a similar version of it just a month ago, and I was that was before Cockroach. I was a, a different company there, um, talking a lot about multi-cloud. Um, so, but I'm, I've been a car a couple of years now and I run um, community, I run developer relations. Um, I'm still also a CNCF ambassador, so yes. I lead community as well. I still run a really large user group in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, so we've just been in so community for years. take us through years. the use case, Jake's story, set us up. Well, I would like Jake to take him through the use case and um, Cockroach is a part of it, but what they've built is amazing and also Jake's history Jake. is amazing. So you can start Jake, wherever you like. Away. Yeah, sure. I'm Jake, I'm CEO and co-founder of OddSed. OddSed is the commercial entity behind SpiceDB and SpiceDB is a permission service. So a permission service is something that lets developers and lets platform teams um, really unlock the full potential of their applications. So a lot of people get stuck on um, my RBAC isn't flexible enough. How do I do these fine-grained things? How do I uh, do these complex sharing workflows that my product manager thinks is so important? And so our service enables those uh, platform teams and developers to do those kinds of things. What's your, what's your infrastructure look like? What's your setup look like? What, how are you guys looking like on the back end? Sure, yeah, so we're obviously built on top of Kubernetes as well, um, one of the reasons that we're here. So we use Kubernetes, we use Kubernetes operators to orchestrate everything. Um, and then we use CockroachDB as our production data store, our production backend data store. So I'm curious, because I love when these little matchmakes come together. You said you've now been presenting on a little bit of a road show, which is very exciting. Lisa, how are you and the team surfacing stories like Jake's? Um, well, I mean, any any place we can. Obviously, all the social medias, all the blogs. How are you finding the, it though? How, how did oh, you? Oh, like from our customers? Well, yeah. We have an open source version, so people start to use us a long time before we even sometimes know about them. Um, and then they'll come to us and they'll be like, I love Cockroach. I'm like, tell me about it. Like, tell me what you built. And if it's interesting, you know, we'll, we'll try to give it some light. And it's always interesting to me um, what people do with it because it's an interesting technology. Uh, like, what they've done with it. I mean, the, the fact that it's globally distributed, right, that was like a really important thing to you. Totally, yeah. We're also long-term fans of Cockroach. So we actually all work together out of Workbench, which was a co-working space yep. and investor oh, cool. in New York City. So yeah. we go way back, we knew the founders. Um, I, I'm constantly saying like, if I could have invested early in Cockroach, that would have been <laughs> the easiest check I could have ever signed. Yeah, that's awesome, and we've been following that too, and you guys are now that. using them. For folks that are out there looking to have the same challenges, what are the big challenges on selecting the database? I mean, as you know the history of Cockroach and your origination story, folks out there might not know, and they're also going to choose a database. What's the, what's the big challenge that they can solve that, that, that kind of comes together? What, what would you describe that? Sure, so we're, as I said, we're a permission service. And per, the data that you store in a permission service is incredibly sensitive. You need it to be around, right? You need it to be available. Um, if the permission service goes down, almost everything else goes down because it's all calling into the permission service. Is this user allowed to do this? Are they allowed to do that? And if we can't answer those questions, then our customer is down, right? So when we're looking at a database, we're looking for reliability, we're looking for durability, disaster recovery, and then permission services are one of the only services that you usually don't shard geographically. So if you look at like AWS's IAM, 
that's a global service, even though the individual things that they run are actually sharded by region. So we also needed a globally distributed database with all of those other properties. So that's what led this us to This is a huge topic, so man, we've been talking about it all week. The cloud is essentially a distributed database at this point, I mean, it's a distributed system. So distributed database is a hot topic. Totally. And not really well reported, a lot of people are talking about it, but how would you describe this distributed trend that's going on? What are the key reasons that are driving it? What's making this more important than ever, in your mind, in your opinion? I mean, for our use case, it was just a hard requirement, right? We had to be able to have this global service. But I think just for general use cases, a distributed, data space, uh, distributed database has that like shared nothing architecture that allows you to kind of keep it running and horizontally scale it. And uh, as your requirements and as your application's needs change, you can just keep adding on capacity and keep adding on reliability and availability. I'd love to get both of your opinion. We've been talking about the, 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 the phases of customers, the advanced, got Kubernetes going crazy, distributed, super alpha geeks, then you got the, the people who are building now, and then you got the laggers who are coming online. Where do you guys see the market now in terms of, I know the alphas are all building all the great stuff, and you guys had great success with all the top logos, and they're all doing hardcore stuff. As the mainstream enterprise comes in, what's their psychology? What's on their mind? What's, if you share any insight into your perspective on that, because we're seeing a lot more of IT folks becoming like real cloud, players. Yeah, I feel I mean, like the mainstream enterprise hasn't been lagging as much as people think. You know, it's, certainly there's been pockets um, in big enterprises that have been looking at this, and as distributed SQL, it gives you that scalability that is absolutely essential for big enterprises, but also it gives you the, the multi-region, you know, the you have to be globally distributed, and for us, for enterprises, you know, you need your data near where the users are. I know this is hugely important to you as well, so you have to be able to have a multi-region functionality, and that's that's one thing that distributed SQL lets you build and that what we built into our product, and I know that's one of the things you like too. Yeah, well we're a brand new product. I mean, we only founded the company two years ago, but we're actually getting inbound interest from big enterprises because we solve the kinds of challenges that they have. And whether, I mean, most of them already do have a cockroach footprint, but whether they did or didn't, once they need to bring in our product, they're going to be adopting cockroach transitively anyway. So. so you're built on top of Cockroach, right? Mm -hmm. And Spice DB is that open source or? It is, yep. Okay, and explain the role of open source in your business model. Can you take a minute to talk about the relevance of that? Yeah, open source is key. Um, my background is before this, I was at Red Hat. Before that, we were at CoreOS, so yeah. CoreOS acquisition. <laughs> yeah. And before that, uh, one of the we best made... acquisitions that uh, ever happened for the value. That was a great, great team. Yeah, uh, we we uh, we had fun. <laughs> um, and before that, we built Quay. So my co-founders and I, we built Quay, which is a um, uh, first private Docker registry. So CoreOS and and all of those things are all open source. They're deeply open yep. source. So it's just uh, in our DNA. We also see it as part of our go-to-market motion. So if you are a database, a lot of people won't even consider what you're doing without being open source. Because they say, I don't want to take a, I don't want to, I don't want to end up in an Oracle situation again. Yeah, Oracle meaning they gouge you, get you locked in, get you in a headlock, increase prices. Yeah. Oh yeah, it gets, it gets, <laughs> it can, it oh, sorry, can get ugly. I got triggered. Real, real fast, uh, I was going to say, do we need to talk about your PTSD there, <laughs> or, uh, what, or what's going on? And the black on? box, I mean, we have 20,000 stars on GitHub yeah. because we've been open and transparent from the beginning. Yeah. And it, well, and both of your projects were started based on Google Papers, right? That is true, yep. That's um, and that's actually, so we're based off of the Google Zanzibar paper, mm -hmm. and as you know, Cockroach is based off of the Google Spanner paper. And in the Zanzibar paper, they have this globally distributed database that they're built on top of. And so when I said, we're going to go and we're going to make a company around the Zanzibar paper, people would go, well, what are you going to do for Spanner? And I was like, easy, Cockroach, they've got us yeah. covered. I know the guys, they're my friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So the question is, why didn't you get into the first round of Cockroach? You said, uh, don't well, answer that. The question he did answer, though, was one of those age-old arguments in our community about pronunciation. We used to argue about Quay. I always called it Key, of course. Yeah. And the co-founder obviously knows how it's pronounced. You know, it's the etcd argument. Yeah. It's the kube cuddle it's versus the gift, kube gift. control versus yeah. kube ctl. Yeah. Quay, from the co-founder, that is end awesome. of argument. You heard it awesome. here first. And we're keeping it going with Auth Z, so. Uh, awesome. A lot of people will say Auth Z or, you know, so we, we just like to have a little ambiguity in the You got to have some honest. semantic arguments arm wrestling here. I mean, <laughs> it, keeps it keeps everyone entertained, especially on the, over the weekend. <laughs> what's, what, what's next? You got obviously Kubernetes in there. Can you explain the relationship between Kubernetes, how you're handling SpiceDB, what, where does the Kubernetes piece fit in and where, where is that going to be going? 
Yeah, great question. Um, our flagship product right now is AutZ Dedicated. And in AutZ Dedicated, what we're doing is we're spinning up a uh, single tenant Kubernetes cluster. We're installing all of our operator suite, and then we're installing the application and running it in a single tenant fashion for our customers in the same region, in the same data center where they're running their applications to minimize latency. Uh, because of this is an authorization service, latency gets passed on directly to the end user. So everybody's trying to squeeze the latency down as far as they can. Yeah. And our strategy is to just run these single tenant stacks for people with the minimal latency that we can and give them a VPC dedicated link. Um, very similar to what Cockroach does in their dedicated product. And the distributed architecture makes that possible because it's lighter weight, it's not as heavy. Is that one of the reasons? Yep, and Kubernetes really gives us sort of like a, a level playing field yeah. where we can say, we're going to, going to take the provider, the cloud provider's yeah. Kubernetes offering, normalize it, lay down our operators, and then use that as the base for delivering our applications. You know, Jake, you made me think of something I wanted to bring up with other guests, but now since you're here, um, you're an expert, I want to bring that up. The talk about super cloud, which we, we coined that term, but it's kind of multi-cloud, is that having workloads on multiple clouds is hard. I mean, there are, they are, there are workloads on, on clouds, but the complexity of one cloud, let's take AWS, mm -hmm. they got availability zones, they got regions, you got now data issues in each one. Being global, not that easy on one cloud, never mind all clouds. Can you share your thoughts on how you see that progressing? Because when you start getting into this distributed database, a lot of good things might come up that could fit into solving the complexity of global workloads. Can you share your thoughts on or scoping that problem space of, of geography? Yeah. Because you mentioned latency, I'm like, that's huge. What are some of the other challenges that other people have with Yeah, global? absolutely. Um, when you have a service like ours where the data is small but very critical, um, you can get a vendor like Cockroach to step in and to fill that gap and to give you that globally distributed database that you can call into and retrieve the data. I think the trickier issues come up when you have larger data. You have huge binary blobs. So back when we were doing Quay, we wanted to be a global service as well, but we had you know, terabytes, petabytes of data that we were like, how do we get this replicated everywhere and not go broke? Um, yeah. So I think those are kind of the interesting issues moving forward, is what do you do with like those huge data lakes, the huge amount of data. But for the, the smaller bits, like the things that we can keep in a relational database, yeah. we're, we're happy that that's quickly becoming a solved problem. And by the way, that, that data problem also is compounded when the, the architecture goes to the edge. Totally. I mean, it's, this is a big issue. Exactly, yeah. Um, edge is something that we're thinking a lot about too. Yeah. Um, we're lucky that right now, the applications that are consuming us are in a data center already. But as they start to move to the edge, we're going to have to move to the edge with them. And it's a story that we're going to have to figure out. All right, so you're a customer cockroach. What's the testimonial if I put you on the spot and say, hey, what's it like working with these guys? <laughs> well, you know, what, what's the, what's this? Well, you know the founder, so you know, you give yeah. a good description. A little bit biased, but we'll, we'll, we'll hold you on it. Yeah, working with cockroach has been great. Um, We've had a couple things that we've run into along the way, and we've gotten great support from our account managers. They've brought in the right technical expertise when we need it. Because what we're doing with Cockroach is not, you, you couldn't do it on Postgres, right? So it's not just a simple rip and replace for us. We're using all of the features of Cockroach, right? We're doing as of system time queries. We're doing global replication. We're, you know, we're, we're consuming it all. And so we do need help from them sometimes, and they've been great. Yeah. And that's natural as they grow their service. I mean, the world's changing. Well, I think one of the important points that you mentioned with multi-cloud, we want you to have the choice. Yeah. You know, you can run it in, in clouds, you can run it hybrid, you can run it on-prem, you can do whatever you want. Um, and it's just, it's one application that you can run in these different data centers. And so really it's up to you, how yeah. do you want to build one, your infrastructure? And one of the things we've been talking yeah. about, the super cloud concept that we've been interested in, getting a lot of contrary, but, but people are leaning into it, is that it's the refactoring and taking advantage of the services, like what you mentioned about the cockroach. People are doing that now on cloud, going, the lift and shift market's kind of, you know, had its time, now it's like, hey, I can start taking advantage of these higher level services or capabilities of someone else's stack and refactoring it in. So I think that's a dynamic that I'm seeing a lot more of and it sounds like it's working out great in this situation. I just came from a talk and I asked them, you know, what don't you want to put in the cloud and what don't you want to run in Kubernetes or on containers and um, the, the, yeah, and the customers that I was on stage with, um, 
one of the guys made a joke and he said, I would put my dog in a container if I could. He was like which in the one? category of, oh, he was to which children, one? right? He's in the category of like, I'll put everything in containers. And these are, you know, including like, Mission critical apps, heritage yeah. apps, and they don't yeah. want to see legacy anymore. Yeah. Heritage apps, these are huge enterprises, yeah. and they want to put everything in the cloud, everything. You just don't want your dog to get stuck on the airplane when it's on the tarmac. Oh, God. That's oh, happened. That, you that's wasn't happened. Be, don't take that analogy okay. literally. Don't think about that. Well, that's, that's Let's not containerize our pets. There's always supply chain concerns. Let's yeah. not. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, going macro, and especially given where we are, CNCF, it's all about open source. Do y'all think that open source builds a better future? Yeah, and a better past. I mean, this is so much of this software is founded on open source. I, we wouldn't be here, really. I've been in the open source community for many, many years, so I wouldn't say I'm biased. I would say this is how we build software. I came from, yes. like, in high school, we're all like, oh, let's build a really cool application. Oh, you know what? I built this because I needed it, but maybe somebody else needs it too. And you put it out there, and that is the ethos of Silicon yeah. Valley, right? Yeah. That's where we grew up. So I've always had that mindset, you know, and social coding, and why have three people right, working on the same thing when one person, you could share. It's so inefficient. All of that, yeah. So I think it's great that people work on what they're really good at. Um, you know, we all use, now you need some standardization, you need some kind of yeah. control around this whole thing. Sometimes some foundations to, you know, herd the cats. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's great, which is why I'm a CNCF ambassador and I spend a lot of time, you know, in my free time talking about open source. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's clear how passionate you are about it. Jake? This is my second company that we founded now, and I don't think either of them could have existed without the base of open source, right? Like when you look at, I have this cool idea for an app or a company and I want to go try it out. The last thing I want to do is go and negotiate with a vendor to get like the core data component yeah. uh, to even be able to get to the prototype. And pay stage. too, by the way. Yeah, hey. <laughs> and pay. <laughs> or hire a, you know, a bunch of PhDs to go and build that core yeah. component for me. So yeah, I mean, Nobody can argue. The it truly is, results. I got to say, a best time. If you're a developer right now, it's awesome to be a developer right now. It's only going to get better as we were ripping in the last session about productivity. We believe that if you follow the digital transformation to its conclusion, developers in IT aren't a department serving the business, they are the business. And that means they're running the show, which means that now their entire workflow is going to change. Uh, it's going to be, have to be leveraging services, partnering, so yeah, open source just fills that, so the more code coming up, yeah. it's just no doubt in our mind that that's, going to, that's happening and will accelerate, so, yeah. you know. No one company yeah. is going to be able to compete with a community. 50,000 yeah. users contributing versus you riding it yourself in your garage well, with it's your people, dog. It's people driven too, it's humans. <laughs> Hopefully person, not in a container. It's humans working together, and here you'll see, I won't say horse training, that's a bad term, but like as projects start to get traction, hey, why don't we come together, as, as the world starts to settle and the projects have traction, you start to see visibility into use cases, functionality, some yeah. projects might not be, they have to kind of, yeah. it's going to see more yeah. kind of coalescing. Now not every feature is going to be developed, over, so I mean, you know, this is why you connect with truly brilliant people who can <laughs> architect a distributed SQL database, like who thought of that? It's amazing, it's as, as our friend used well, to say. Well let me ask you a question before we wrap up while we have time. What is the secret of Kubernetes success? What made Kubernetes specifically successful? Was it timing, was it the, the unambitious nature of it, the unification of it, was it, what was the reason? Why is Kubernetes successful, right? And why nothing else? Well, well you know what I'm going to say, so I'm going to let Jake answer first. Don't let Jake, you first. go first. Oh boy, um, if we look at what was happening when Kubernetes first came out, it was Mesosphere was kind of like the, the big player in the space. Um, I think Kubernetes really, it had the backing from the right companies. It had the, you know, had the credibility. Um, it was sort of loosely based on Borg, but with the story of like, we fixed everything that was broken in Borg yeah. and it's better now. Um, yeah, so I think it was just kind of, and, and obviously people were looking for a solution to this problem as they were going through their containerization journey. And uh, yeah, I think it was just timing, right the place. The timing consensus of, hey, if we just let this happen, something good might come together for everybody. That's yeah. the way I felt. I think it was right place, right time, right solution. And then it just kind of exploded. Uh, when we were at CoreOS, Alex Polvi, our CEO, yeah. he heard about uh, Kubernetes and he was like, you know, we, we had a thing called Fleet D, uh, or we had a tool called Fleet, and he's like, nope, we're all in on Kubernetes now. And that was an amazing, yeah, I remember that interview amazing I did with him. decision. Yeah. 
It's I clear. Am. We can feel the shift. It's something that's come up a lot this week is, is the commitment. Everybody's all in. People are ready for their transformation. And Kubernetes is definitely going to be the orchestrator that we're leveraging. Yeah. And it's an amazing community, but it was it, it, we got lucky that the, the foundational technology, I mean, you know, came, coming out of Google based on Go, totally. is based on Go, it's no coincidence yeah. that this sort of nature of, you know, pods, horizontally scalable, it all fits together. I mean, so, it does make sense. Yeah, I mean, no offense to Python and some of the other technologies that were built in other languages, but Go is an awesome language. It's so, so innovative, innovative things you could do with it. Awesome. Oh, definitely. Jake, I'm very curious since we learned on the way in, you're a Detroit native. I am, yep, I grew up in the, in Warren, which is just a suburb right outside of Detroit. So, what does it mean to you as a Michigan-born bloke to be here, see your entire community invade? It is, uh, I, I grew up coming to the Detroit Auto Show in this very room. That brought me to Detroit the first time, love NAIAS, been there with our and, friends at Ford just behind us. And it's just so uh, interesting to me to see uh, the accumulation, the accumulation of tech coming to Detroit, because it's really not something that historically has been a huge presence, and I just love it. I love to see the activity out on the streets, I love to see all the restaurants and coffee shops full of people. I'm just, I might tear up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I was wondering if it would give you a little bit of that hometown pride and also the joy yeah. of bringing your community together. I mean, this is merging your two probably most core communities. Yeah, yeah. Your uh, youth and your and your career. It doesn't get more personal than that, really. Right. Yeah, it's just been, it's been really exciting to see the energy. Well, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. Thanks yeah, for thank us. you both so much. Lisa, you were a joy and a ball of energy right when you walked up. Jake, what a compelling story. Really appreciate you sharing it with us. John, thanks for the banter and the I'm fabulous glad. questions I'm as glad I could usual. help out. Yeah, <laughs> you do a lot more than help out, sweetheart. <laughs> and to all of you watching theCUBE today, thank you so much for joining us live from Detroit, theCUBE studios. My name is Savannah Peterson, and we'll see you for our event wrap up next. <laughs>